Today I want to answer a very popular beginner question. Is computer math broken? So no matter if you learn JavaScript, Clojure, Python, Go or any other mainstream language, most of them suffer from the same problem that 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 does not equal 0 0.3 exactly, but a slightly bigger number or double or float. <laughs> Okay, and oftentimes beginners are referred to a computer science paper from 1991 and I don't think that's a good idea. You don't need to read 44 pages to understand that the basic problem is not the addition. The basic problem is that these decimal numbers that humans prefer are not very compatible with the binary nature of computers. So if only we had eight fingers instead of ten, we wouldn't be even having this discussion. Now, what do I mean when I say the binary nature of computers? Computers prefer to compute in binary, so a system with only two digits, 0 and 1, and binary digits are abbreviated as bits. Okay, so here's a little example that I devised myself. I reserved 16 bits in my computer, 4 bits for the integral part of a number and 12 bits for the fractional part and we call systems such, such as these fixed point representations because the point is always at the same point. <laughs> okay, so the first four bits can be used for the integral part. For example, I can activate these two bits, then I get 8 plus 4 which equals 12 and I can also activate this bit, then I get 13 and if I also activate this bit then I get 15, the biggest number. 16 is not representable in this system. Okay, and we can continue this descending powers of 2 series. So after 2 to the 3, 2, 1 and 0 would come 2 to the minus 1 or a half, 0 0.5, then a quarter, 0 0.25, an eighth, 0 0.125 and so on. And immediately we can see a problem. Every one of those negative powers of 2 ends in a 5 in its own new previously unused column. So any combination of those bits will also end in a 5. Right? For example, this combination ends in a 5, this combination ends in a 5, this combination ends in a 5. So if we just pick numbers at random, all of these randomly generated numbers will always end um, in a 5. Let's see if we get a different column here. right? And the 5 is dictated by the last bit um, that is set to 1. Okay, now the numbers that we were interested in don't end in a 5. So, here's our proof. <laughs> These numbers cannot be represented exactly in a computer if, you, if we use binary fractions, because every binary fraction will end in a 5. There we go. I just spared you from reading 44 pages of dense computer science. So, if we can't represent those numbers exactly, how could we approximate them? Well, we don't need to fiddle with the bits at the front because we want to start with zero point. What about the next bits? A half is too much, a quarter is too much, an eighth is too much, um, a sixteenth is okay, um, then a thirty-tooth or thirty-second <laughs> added to that is also okay, and then the next bit goes over our number, the next bit also goes over our number, and then we are in safe territory again. Then we go over the number again, we go over the number again, and then we're in safe territory again. You may see a pattern emerging, but I think the pattern is more obvious if we don't look at 0 0.1 but 0 0.2. Here it's obvious that we have an alternating sequence of 0 and 1 pairs. right? And if only I had an infinite number of bits available, then I could, I could approximate uh, 0 0.2 exactly in some infinite calculus sense. Okay, but since I don't have an infinite sequence of bits available, I have to round. Okay, and here we round it down. Okay, then 0 0.2 and 0 0.4, you can see those are just slightly shifted versions from one another. And then 0 0.8 is rounded differently. Why does that make sense? Well, here we have a 4 in the fifth decimal place, and if I put that bit away, we have an error of 2 in the fourth decimal place. So that's clearly worse. That's why uh, 0 0.8 was rounded up. Okay, and in fact for 0 0.1 that's also rounded up because 9 in the fifth decimal, decimal place is better than 
uh, having an error of two and a half in the fourth decimal place, right? Okay. Cool. Yeah. So the basic problem is some of these numbers will be rounded up. Both of these will be rounded up in the computer in a real system that's more complicated than this, whereas the best approximation for 0 0.3 will be rounded down and that's where the um, difference comes in. Okay, so I encourage you to play around with this. I will link the website in the description so that you can get a better visceral feel for binary fractions. So far I've only claimed that 0 0.2 is an infinite fraction of 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and so on ad infinitum. Can we actually prove that? Yes, it turns out we can prove it and the proof is not that hard. So if we just look at the first four bits we can see 1 over 8 and 1 over 16. If we combine them we have 3 over 16. Okay. The next four bits are 3 over 16 squared, then we have 3 over 16 cubed, 3 over 16 hypercubed and so on ad infinitum. So an infinite geometric series and here is the infinite geometric series again written down. Now it turns out there's a closed form for series uh, such as this. We can simply subtract 1 from the base. In this case 16 minus 1 is 15, 3 over 15 is 1 over 5. And that's exactly 0 0.2. So here's your proof that this infinite fraction indeed is exactly equal to 0 0.2 and you can perform similar proofs for numbers such as 0 0.1, 0 0.3 or other infinite fractions. Before we look at alternatives to binary fractions, let's talk about digits for a minute. What exactly is a digit? It turns out the word digit has multiple meanings and one of the meanings is finger. That's not too surprising. Humans have 10 fingers. We count with our fingers. Hence our numeric system has 10 digits from 0 to 9. Humans have 10 digits in both senses of the word. Okay, next important point is that money is a human decimal invention. Right? We decided we want to be able to split up a euro in one of these arbitrary values and we made coins for those. For example, I have all of these coins um, in my pocket right now. Okay, and we have a reasonable expectation that five of these co coins is exactly a euro, 20 of these coins is, is exactly a euro and so on. On the other hand, if you have a euro and you, and you want to divide it by seven, right? You have se seven children and one euro, then every child would get 14 cents, totaling up to 98 cents and we drop two cents on the floor. Now, where's the outrage in the newspapers that our decimal system fl is flawed or that our euro system is flawed? You can't divide a euro uh, by seven. You don't see the outrage because by convention we decided that these numbers are more important than this number. Right? It's just pure convention or <laughs> invention in this case. I wonder if those words are related. Okay. Now, on the other hand, irrational numbers that you find or discover in nature the square root of 2, um, the, the golden ratio, the natural number, pi, um, the Feigenbaum constant, or if you compute with sine, cosine and, and, and tangent, um, these are not inherently decimal. It doesn't matter which base you choose. It could be base 10, base 2, base 8, base 16. You can only approximate those numbers in any system and if your goal is um, computations on a computer, for example in a computer game you want to display pixels and you know to rotate them or something, it, it would be a complete waste to perform uh, these calculations in decimal, right? The computer can perform them best in binary, so let's do it in binary. There's nothing inherently decimal about pi. We write it down in decimal, right? Maybe you enter a pi computation contest and the judges can only read decimal. But in general, there's no reason why pi contests couldn't be held in binary. Or an alien civilization maybe do it in, in octal because that's the system they prefer. Right? You have to understand that decimal is a human convention and for irrational numbers it really doesn't matter which base you choose. Choose the most space, time and electricity efficient one. And for computers, that is base 2. Okay, now let's say we are indeed in the domain of money and we are disappointed that 0.1 plus 0.2 is not exactly 0.3. How could we mitigate this? So 
let's say this is 10 cents, this is 20 cents and we want the result to be 30 cents, then why are we computing in euros or dollars in the first place? Why don't we simply compute in cents? Then we get a precise result in cents with the additional benefit that instead of 16 decimal digits of precision, we get 19 decimal digits of precision. Right? You just have to perform some extra step to print this as 0 0.30, but you have the same problem here, right? You don't want to print this as 0 0.3. <laughs> so how you print these numbers to, to the terminal or the, the computer screen is, is a separate matter from computing them. Okay, but let's say, no, you don't want to compute in cents, you really do want to compute in euros or dollars for some obscure reason, then there is a solution to that. You simply append the letter M to your numbers and then you get an exact result. Guess what the M stands for? It stands for money, because besides money, there is rarely a reason to, to compute in decimal. Okay, for example, <laughs> if we go back to our uh, example with seven children and one euro, what happens if we divide one euro by seven children and the big decimal type promises exact results? That seems like a contradiction, right? Let's see what happens. Okay, we get an arithmetic exception, non-terminating decimal expansion, no exact representable decimal result. So as soon as you leave your nice decimal bubble of plus and minus with your nice numbers and you start dividing or even worth square root or something, um, it simply doesn't work anymore. This system doesn't work anymore. It really only works for adding and subtracting money. Let's finish on time. For example, if we want to divide one hour into 12 equal parts, we get the same exception again because 1 over 12 is an infinite decimal fraction. Okay, and we can make the same argument. Why are we computing with hours if we're interested in the minutes? Why don't we compute with minutes directly? Then we get five minutes exactly as a result. If you need second precision, we simply scale up by 60, then we get 300 seconds. And if you need milliseconds precision, we scale up by 1000 again, then we get 300,000 milliseconds as a result. Now it turns out time is so important that most languages have bespoke types for time. For example, we can say um, I want a duration of exactly one hour. And if we evaluate that, we get this standardized format here that tells us you have exactly one hour. And if we then divide that by 12, we get exactly five minutes. Okay. Now, what happens if we divide an hour into seven equal parts? That's not possible precisely or exactly. Um, in this case, we don't get an exception. We just get a rounded result, right? Eight minutes, 34 seconds, and then this amount of nanoseconds. We can recognize our good old friend here. That's one over seven, repeating indefinitely. But interestingly, after five comes seven, but the five was not rounded up to seven. So the author of this type decided that rounding down always is the better option for whatever reason. Okay, meaning if we now multiply back up by seven, then we get a slightly smaller result than our initial one hour. That's short by five nanoseconds. Okay, I hope by now you have a better understanding how these binary fractions work and in particular why numbers such as 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 can't be represented exactly and why this is only really an issue for money or other human decimal inventions. <laughs>